Hey everybody, I'm John Finn and I'm back and we're just going to jump right back into all these unboxing and reviews with one of my most anticipated figures of the year, which is Koldar from Mattel Creations, as you can tell. Let's go ahead and get started on taking a look at this magnificent package. Okay, so on the front, you can see we've got this really cool, almost like pen and ink uh, version of Koldar there on the front with some, some writing there on the rock. In fact, that might be the, the artist's signature. We turn it around, we get another cool image of Koldar throwing his mighty axe in battle. Um, and that's that's really the whole of the exterior box. And of course, you've got the Mo2 logo there on top and on the bottom corners and stuff like that. But I'm going to get this box open and let's take a closer look at Koldar in his Lister Pack. One thing I want to point out real quick before we get him out of this box is that this is different from the Wondar I received. It actually comes with this just kind of block of cardboard in here to keep the, the card straighter. I like that. That's a cool little touch and I'm glad that uh, Mattel did it, even though they did it for this older figure and not for the more, um, well, older in terms of when the orders went up. But they didn't do it for Wondar, which is a little bit strange. We'll go ahead and slide him out of the box here. We're going to take this exterior box and we're going to set it aside because we're keeping that. It is not going to be carnage. And here he is in his fully packaged glory. A little visitor there. Um, you can see here he has the basic Masters of the Universe Origins uh, artwork here with him throwing the axe there on the front. Koldar, heroic, war heroic warrior of justice. You can see the mini comic there in the back and his accessories behind him. We'll take a look at the back here. And as we know, all of the Mattel creations have a different back from the regular Origins figures in that they have just one giant piece of art on the back, which is really freaking cool. And it's so epic. You get all of these auxiliary characters on the bottom you get a bunch of snake men you got this cool pegasus thing flying in the background these i can't remember what that guy's name is but he looks like a kind of like a frog uh going on the attack here so that's really cool it gives us kind of an idea of what to expect from the snake men that are coming next year in the origins line pretty excited for them never had those growing up so it'll be nice to get those for a change but i'm gonna go ahead and get this guy out of the package here we're gonna preserve this uh, back as much as we can and as soon as I got them out we will come right back and get a review of the figure and mini comic themselves and here we have Koldar in all of his glory and you can see I, I was able to preserve most of the box the card back for his package oh no he fell he's not standing super steady that's just because of the surface I have him on and isn't the most flat but he does come with the mini comic as with all of the other origins figures and as with the uh, Mattel Creations versions of Wondar. This is a longer uh, mini comic than the typical four pager that we get with the Origins figures. Pretty good length, a lot of kind of development, a lot of characters in here. Uh, pretty cool little mini comic. I dig this quite a bit. I just I I lament that it only comes with this kind of hard to get figure. Um, I really hope Mattel fixes the way they do the pre-orders for these things soon because uh, the way that this and One Dar were put on sale just wasn't fair to the consumer and the collector. And I really hope Mattel fixes that. But this is really cool. I love the detail on it. Um, his axe is a different color in the comic than it is in the figure. But that's okay. We're used to that. This is an 80s line. And that's what the 80s toy lines were all about. Um, all right. So let's take a closer look at the figure himself. All right, we can see we got Koldar out of the figure here. He has this nice, bright, yellowish, goldish armor going on with the helmet with the cool horns coming off. I can't really tell if he has eyes or not. It looks like there might be eyes in there, uh, but it's really... You can kind of see the glint right here of one, uh, but it's hard to tell if that's just me imagining things because of the way the lights hit or if they're actually there a uh, helmet doesn't come off of course it's just a part of his head armor will come off um it's just like the rest of the origins figures you can see the clips there i'm not going to take it off just because these are a little bit of a booger to get put back on they are that softer um sculpt than what we're used to in the vintage line he has a holder for the sword on the back here you can see he has these nice golden um accents on his cuffs 
and his belt. His boots are completely different from almost anything we've seen in Origins so far, which I really appreciate that. I hope we get more figures with this sculpt here, and I'm sure we will since this guy's already out. Now the weapons, I thought the weapons were um, a bit different than they are. I thought that the axe was just a copy of the one that came with He-Man, but it's not. This is a unique sculpt that I don't think we've seen in Origins yet. And then his sword, of course, is the same sword that comes with Triclops and Fisto, just in a different color, and I'm fine with that. That's what the these lines were all about. We're kind of reusing parts and things of that nature. Uh, he has the same articulation as the standard Origins figures, which means heads, shoulders. He's got bendable elbows. He has swivel at the elbows. His hands will go back and forth and rotate around. He can rotate at the, uh, the waist. He has legs that can go out, they can go forward, they can go back. Knees that can bend. Boot cut here at the shin so you can swivel there, swivel at the knee, and a ball joint for the feet so you can really get all kinds of crazy fun posing out of him. Uh, the sword, of course, you can store here on his back, which is kind of a thing with uh, Masters of the Universe characters liking to have their swords on their back. Let's see if I can get him to stand up here real quick. There we go. Yeah, this is Koldar. Uh, Mattel Creations exclusive. I am so stoked that I was able to get my hands on this guy. This is, like I've said before, one of my two most anticipated figures coming into 2022. The, <clears throat> the other being Wondar. And that I was able to get both of them is just really great. I'm really grateful for that. Um, but Mattel needs to work on how they distribute these guys. Uh, they recently did an Ultimate Edition Cody Rhodes where... They took pre-orders for two weeks and then started manufacturing. That's what really what they should be doing with these Mattel um, uh, Masters of the Universe Origins. Set a pre-order time period, then manufacture afterwards. Otherwise, you're just going to be alienating more and more collectors and, and buyers. And I don't think that's okay. And I think kids as well, who this is aimed at, or it should be aimed at, should have a chance to be able to get their hands on figures like these without having to go through all the rigmarole. Because that really does take the fun out of collecting when you have to fight and scrape and fight all these scalpers and shit like that to get these guys. And I think this guy is a buy limit of like five. So people could buy five of these when it first came out. And that's why it, it just sold out within like two minutes is because everybody was buying all these extra copies just so they could scalp them and all this other shit. Buy one, guys. In these situations where there's a limited number, buy one. One. Keep it open. Or, or or open it or keep it closed, but don't buy several just for your own personal gain because it doesn't help. It just makes other people have a harder time collecting, and that's bullshit. We need to be better to each other than the companies are to us, period. But I love this guy. If you're able to get him for retail especially, I absolutely would say get this guy. And honestly, I would pay up to 35 maybe even 40 bucks for him because he's unique. He has a cool, bright color palette. He has two cool weapons. And he has a longer comic than the typical Origins figure would come with, which is just fantastic. So you get even more art, you get more story, and just more that you can do with this guy than typically you could with an Origins figure. Well, I hope this gave you some information about Mr. Koldar here, whether or not he's one you want to add to your collection. And I definitely would say yes if you can get him for $40 is a maybe, but $35 or less, I would definitely go for him, especially if you can get him closer to retail. It's a no-brainer. Like, you got to add this guy to your collection. Hopefully, we'll see him appear in the Masterverse as well. That would be, a, I think he would look wicked in a Masterverse, Masterverse sculpt. But we'll see that. You know, if we ever get there, we'll cross that bridge then. Hope this gave you some good ideas. I hope you keep collecting the way you like to collect, whether that's keeping your figures mock, opening for display, or for play. However you like to do it's the best way to do it. And if anybody else tells you otherwise, tell them you're going to shove Koldar's horns straight up somewhere that's very uncomfortable. Until next time, I'm John Finn, and I'm out.